Astra Georgia are a football club who were immortalised in England by this man, a West Ham fan named Dom, though if you are familiar with Dom's rant, you could be forgiven for thinking that the club's full name was Astra Fucking Goo Goo. Dom infamously described Astra as being a bunch of Romanian farmers and fucking peasants, in a combination of fairly harmless but disparaging football lingo, combined with at least a hint of Eastern European bigotry. Though, ironically, and no doubt unbeknownst to Dom, Astra's owner who orchestrated their rise did actually have a background in agriculture. Far from being farmers and peasants though, for the best part of a decade, Astra were a formidable football club. Having won promotion to the top flight of Romanian football for the first time in 2009, Astra relocated to the city of Giorgiu in 2012 and qualified for the Europa League group stage in the 2014-15 season, after beating French giants Lyon on away goals in the final playoff round. Astra then managed to knock West Ham out of the Europa League qualifiers, not once, but twice, in successive seasons, hence that extremely viral rant, and they even managed to reach the knockout stage of the Europa League in the 2016-17 season, progressing from a group which contained Roma, Victoria Plitzen, and Austria Vienna. In 2015-16, Astra finished above both Stau and Dinamo Bucharest to be crowned as champions of Romanian football for the first time, to add to their first Romanian Cup, which they won a couple of years before that. Clearly, this was a serious football club with big aspirations, plenty of talented footballers, and an owner and an academy which threatened to turn Astra into the dominant force within Romanian football. Yet, just six years on from knocking West Ham out of the Europa League for the second successive season and becoming Romanian champions for the first time, and just one year on from relegation from the top flight of Romanian football, Astra are now competing in Liga 3, the third tier of Romanian football, where they currently occupy last place in Group 4 of the division, with zero goals scored and 48 conceded, just five games into the current campaign. Astra have lost their last two fixtures against CS Dinamo and Tunari by 13-0 and 19-0 scorelines, which is what you might describe as a tough start to the new campaign. The last time there was a start to anything this bad, Liz Truss had just entered number 10 and appointed Quasi Quarteng as her chancellor. The sheer magnitude of those two defeats, whilst memorable Astra wins against the likes of Leon and West Ham are so fresh in people's minds, caused confusion about the scale and speed of Astra's demise to go viral online, which a lot of you tagged me in. I have no idea why anyone would think that the downfall of an obscure football club might be something that I would be interested in, but what with this being the people's channel and all, I decided to investigate nonetheless. And I wasn't disappointed. So sit back, relax, and join me on a journey to Giorgio, not Goo Goo, a city situated amongst mudflats and marshes on the left bank of the Danube, on Romania's southern border with Bulgaria, as we explore a bizarre football club whose demise was even more rapid than its rise, and who typify the money, politics, and sheer volatility of Romanian football, which is in a state of crisis right now. Depending on where you look, you will find very different information about when Astra Giorgio were actually founded. Wikipedia says 1921, more than a hundred years ago, Google and Transfer Mart say 1934, and Football Manager reckons that it was only 2012, just 10 years ago. Whilst this might seem to be a little confusing, all are actually true in their own ways. FC Astra Giorgio, you see, are a football club who have had more names than Snoop Doggy Dog and more identities than David Bowie. The 1921 date cited by Wikipedia marked the founding of Klubal Sportive Astra Romana, a sports club based in Prahova County, which was founded by Henry Dieterding. Dieterding was one of the first executives of the Royal Dutch Petroleum Company, today known as Shell, and he was employed as the company's general manager from 1900 to 1936. During those 36 years, 
Deterring succeeded in making Royal Dutch Shell a competitor to John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil. Deterding became a fierce critic and opponent of the Soviet Union after Lenin nationalised his properties and operations in Azerbaijan, and he subsequently helped to resettle thousands of Russians who emigrated from the Russian Empire following the October Revolution. In 1920, Deterding was made an honorary knight commander of the Order of the British Empire for his services to Anglo-Dutch relations and for his work in supplying the Allies with petroleum during the First World War. During the 1930s, however, Deterding became an ardent Nazi, relocating to Germany, meeting personally with Adolf Hitler, and becoming the single largest donor to Hitler's fundraising wing of the Nazi party. Whilst you won't find too much written about it on the Shell website, the funds which, at least in part, fueled and facilitated the worst horrors of the Third Reich, therefore, were generated on the forecourts of Shell garages and petrol stations around the world. Prahova County and the city of Ploesti was home to the world's first large oil refinery, and Klubel's sportive Astra Romana was originally founded by the Terdings Astra Romana Society, not for Romanians, but for the English, American, and Dutch officials based in Romania. Klubel's sportive Astra Romana was originally made up of multiple teams with Astra Romana Campina representing the local oil refinery, and it was only in 1937 that the society decided to merge all of their Prahova teams to create Astra Romana Ploiesti, based, as their name would suggest, in the city of Ploiesti. Though only a year later, they were on the move once again, this time to nearby Campina, changing their name to Columbia Ploiesti. Whatever their name though, the football club that was founded by the Nazi-enabling oil tycoon Henry de Terding spent most of their first century in existence playing lower league football. It wasn't until 1992, then named CS Astra Ploiesti, that Astra finally reached even the third tier of Romanian football, where they finished as high as third and as low as 14th over the next four seasons. It was in 1996 that everything changed for Astra. One of the wealthiest people in Romania, Ioan Nicolai, acquired the then third tier side as he expanded his already vast business empire. Nicolai grew up in Ceausescu's Socialist Republic of Romania, an Eastern Bloc state governed by the Romanian Communist Party, where some allege that he worked as an informant. During this time, Nicolai was officially employed by ICE Dunarea, which was a state-owned foreign trade enterprise, where he specialised in the export of chemical fertilisers. When communism fell in Romania in 1989, following the Romanian Revolution, and Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena were executed, Romania began a deeply dysfunctional transition to becoming a so-called free market economy. Nicolae went into business in 1990, founding a company that traded chemical fertilisers, and other chemicals, called Interaction. In 1995, he founded Interagro, which manufactures similar products, and is still Nikolai's largest business and the primary source of his wealth to this day. That wealth was estimated as being $1.1 billion in 2010, when Nikolai became only the third Romanian to feature in the Forbes list of billionaires and climbed to $1.2 billion in the 2014 and 2015 rankings, with Nikolai reported to have become Romania's richest person by 2016. In addition to Interagro, which owns more than 50,000 hectares of agricultural land and has storage for more than a million tonnes of grain, in 1997, Nikolai also acquired the Astro Romana oil refinery, which was once owned by Shell, for $16 million. A year later, he entered the insurance industry, and in the year 2000, he won the privatisation tender of the state-owned cigarette manufacturing company, Galaxy Tobacco. Though Nikolai wasn't yet a billionaire, when he first entered the world of football in his early 40s, he was already among the wealthiest people in the country, and his presence at a third-tier Romanian football club was always likely to prove significant. During his first summer at the helm, Astra merged with Divizia B-side Danubiana Bucharesti from the Romanian capital, briefly changing their name to Danubiana Ploiesti and competing in the second tier of Romanian football for the first time. 
1998, they won promotion, reaching Divizia A for the first time, where they spent their next five seasons. The 2000s were a particularly strange period for the club, even by Astra's standards. In 2003, Astra merged with Petrolol Ploiesti, a much larger local club who are four-time Romanian champions, but in their first season following the merger, the new club, known as Petrolol Ploiesti, were relegated from Divizia A. Due to disagreements with his co-owners following the merger and relegation, Nikolai gave up his 50% stake in the club and refounded Astra in the second division instead. Since Petrol Ploiesti retained their name, license, and branding following the merger and demerger, with Astra being swallowed up by them during that process, Astra technically didn't exist as a club during those two years. After refounding, though, initially under the names CS Ploiesti and later FC Ploiesti, Nikolai's side did not enjoy the immediate success that they had found first time around. In fact, in their first season back in Divizia B, they were relegated back down to the league where it had all started for Nikolai Imprahova. In 2009, though, Astra regained not only their top flight status, but also their old name, or something very similar, becoming FC Astra Ploiesti. This was a period of extraordinary tumult in Romanian football, though not all that extraordinary, it should be said, by Romanian football's own standards. FC Polytechnia Timisoara, for example, who finished second in the 2010-11 League One season, were relegated after failing to meet the requirements for obtaining a license to compete in the top flight, along with four other clubs that season. Astra survived with all of this chaos and flux going on around them for four seasons, only narrowly avoiding relegation in each of them, before Nikolai made a radical decision to relocate the club in 2012. Though Astra are not a big football club, historically having been lower league minnows, they had been based in Prahova County in all of their various iterations since being founded in their earliest form in 1921. The club's name, Astra, was taken from the nearby oil refinery, and the city of Ploiesti, or somewhere very nearby, had been their home throughout all of that time. What's more, Nikolai wasn't moving Astra a few miles down the road, he was relocating them more than two hours south of Ploiesti to Giorgiu, which is less than a third of the size of Ploiesti, and sits right on Romania's southern border with Bulgaria. Whilst Astra had few fans in Ploiesti, they would have even fewer in Giorgiu, a provincial city with little football tradition. The local city authorities had been looking to put that right, hence why Nikolai moved Astra there, but it was a half-hearted relocation at best. Though they built a new 8,500 capacity ground in Giorgiu, the Marin Anastovici Stadium, which opened in 2014, the club was effectively based in Bucharest, or sometimes in the nearby Bulgarian city of Ruz, which is where they trained, and their reserve team continued to play their home games at the Astra Stadium in Ploiesti, which itself only underwent major renovations in 2009. Astra even played some of their very biggest games at the National Stadium in Bucharest, rather than at their newly built stadium in Georgia. Nonetheless, Given that Astra's relocation and rebranding as FC Astra Georgiou was accompanied by their most significant investment yet, the club started to become a real force within the Romanian game from 2012 onwards. Just in case you were attempting to keep count, Astra have changed their name 13 times in total, which, whilst I'm sure is not a record, it can't be too far off, and that includes six new names since Nikolai acquired the club in 1996 alone, or seven if you want to include the merger and two years of inactivity from 2003 to 2005 as well. During their first season playing out of Giorgiu, Astra finished fourth, qualifying for the Europa League first qualifying round for the first time. The following season, they finished second, ahead of their partners turned rivals, Petrol Ploiesti, and behind only Romanian giants, Stau Bucharesti, who were on the verge of a crisis and split that I have previously made a video about on this channel, all of their own. It was in 2014 that Astra really announced themselves, though, 
not only in Romania, where they beat Stau in the final of the Romanian Cup on penalties to claim their first major trophy, but also in Europe, where they beat Champions League regulars Lyon on away goals in the Europa League qualifying to qualify for the group stage. They finish bottom of their group, but European Knights against the likes of Celtic, Red Bull Salzburg, and Dinamo Zagreb put Astra on the European map, as well as massively increasing the club's revenue. These were halcyon days for the very small number of Astra fans, but they would be interrupted in 2015, when owner Ioan Nikolai was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for his part in illegally financing the 2009 Romanian presidential election. Courts heard that Nikolai had donated €150,000 to a politician from the Social Democratic Party, or PSD, in exchange for perceived influence in government if that party was elected, and favourable government contracts being handed out to Interagro. Incredibly, in Romania, apparently they prosecute people for doing stuff like that. In the UK, you just get a peerage. The PSD candidate didn't actually win the election, losing by 0.66% in the closest election in Romanian history. Nikolai's sentencing had inevitable consequences for Astra, not least in terms of their funding, and they soon found themselves under insolvency investigations after Portuguese outfit Braga reported them for the non-payment of loan fees on two of their players. At the time, seven out of the 18 top flight teams in Romania were insolvent, and the league appeared to be teetering on the verge of collapse. Astra eventually made the payments, ending the investigation, and it was actually whilst Nikolai was imprisoned, somewhat ironically, that they enjoyed their greatest success. They beat West Ham over two legs in successive seasons, winning 4-3 and 2-1 on aggregate. They were crowned as Romanian champions for the first time in 2016, and the following season, they even managed to reach the knockout stage of the Europa League, where they were only narrowly defeated 3 to an aggregate by eventual quarter-finalist Genk. Even at their most successful, though, Astra had always been chaotic and volatile. Nikolai ran the club like Roman Abramovich on steroids, going through even more managers than name changes. Between 2010 and 2015, an era of unprecedented success for the club, Astra went through a remarkable 15 different managers. Even the Watford owners would consider that excessive. It wasn't just managers that came and went either. The Astra squad was routinely overhauled at the end of every season. As a new manager came in with new ideas, players were sold with little consideration, and a whole raft of new arrivals came in. Astra's financial edge over most of the league, and the general malaise of Romanian football, allowed them to remain competitive despite this lack of stability. But in 2017, when Nikolai's business empire began to crumble, and his net worth was reportedly slashed in half over a remarkably short period of time, it was clear that Astra's financial edge, which had only ever come from Nikolai himself pumping money into the club, was to be significantly thwarted. Virtually the entire Astra squad was sold during the summer of 2017, for a total of more than £2 million, meanwhile not a single penny was spent on their replacements, all of whom arrived either on loan or on free transfers. Astra also had a new manager, Maria Shumjadica, who had led Astra to their first Romanian championship, had also been banned for six months that season, later reduced to two months upon appeal, for allegedly betting on football matches. He was replaced by Edward Iordanescu, who now manages the Romanian national team, and despite the turmoil, Astra enjoyed a productive campaign. They finished fifth in the championship playoffs, one place higher than the previous season, but Nikolai still sacked Iordanescu, claiming that his football was boring. The Romania boss had adopted a more defensive counter-attacking approach to make up for Astra's squad having been significantly weakened, but whilst his results were excellent given the circumstances, clearly, it wasn't up to Nikolai's standings. Over the summer of 2018, under new boss Georgi Malcescu, whose list of former clubs displayed on screen now is pretty outrageous, Astra placed virtually their entire squad for the second successive summer. There was a French revolution, as several French players arrived at the club, including Mike Sester, 
who previously played for Leighton Orient and Woking, and Astra also forked out some serious cash for the first time in a while, bringing Romanian international and former top scorer Dennis Alabek back to Georgiou for around 1 million euros after he fell out with the management team at FCSB. Still, Astra remained a force, finishing fourth during the regular season, but it was in 2019 when players started to go unpaid that the proverbial really hit the fan. Players began to publicly criticise Nikolai, which went about as well as you might expect. Indeed, Lorenzo Bus even had his contract terminated for doing just that, and players even started to boycott training sessions. During the championship playoffs, having lost just six games all season, during the entirety of the regular campaign, Astra lost eight out of their ten games with a minus 14 goal difference and slumped to a fifth place finish. Over the summer of 2019, you guessed it, everyone left and Astra started from scratch once again. They still just squeaked into the playoffs during the regular season by two points, and then finished third in the championship playoffs, but it was the advent of COVID-19, which coincided with a flurry of doping accusations made against the club, and more off-pitch issues for Nikolai that really spelt the end for Astra. They finished ninth in the 2020-21 regular season, dropping down into the relegation playoffs, and just one win from nine games saw Astra relegated for the first time since their promotion to the top flight in 2009 and relocation to Georgiou and renaming in 2012. That collapse occurred during the same time that Nikolai, following his two and a half year prison sentence in 2015, was sentenced to five years behind bars in 2021, this time for buying influence, instigation to tax evasion, and instigation to money laundering. Nikolai's primary business, Interagro, was accused of creating fictitious companies and contracts which had defrauded the Romanian government of around 2.2 million euros. For someone who was estimated to be worth 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars in 2015, it seems a paltry sum to have dodged in return for a five-year prison sentence. By 2021 though, Nikolai's business empire was severely diminished. The demise of Astra was the least of his concerns, as most of his fertilizer plants across Romania were closed, his tobacco factory was declared insolvent, and the value of his real estate plummeted. The loss of Nikolai's financial support saw Astra hit with a massive 20-point deduction during their first season back in the second division, which meant that it wasn't entirely surprising that the team was relegated back down to the third tier last season, with a total of minus one point. With Nikolai in prison, and having far bigger concerns whilst incarcerated, and indeed, when he gets out than football, most people in Romania expected Astra to fold over the summer just gone. Instead, executive president Marian Costia came out fighting, declaring that, We couldn't survive with minus 20 points. It was very difficult. From my information, it is not desired to disband the team. On the contrary, let's go back to the first league. We will permanently move to Georgiou. We have wanted to go there permanently since winter. We will start over, and we want promotion in the first year. End quote. Everyone who was at Astra Georgiou last season has now left, and I know that I've said that a few times now because it isn't the first time that it has happened, but I do mean literally everyone. Last month, at the beginning of this season, Astra filled in a team of just eight players, all aged 18, in the second round of the Romanian Cup, their Masor was named on the bench, and after suffering two injuries in the opening 25 minutes, by which stage they were already 6-0 down, they were forced to forfeit the game due to having too few players. A week later, Astra had to forfeit a league game against SC Popeshti Lidani before it had even started in that case, for the same reason. In addition to their lack of players, Astra also lacked the resources to pay the referee and meet their other financial obligations associated with putting a fixture on in the third tier of Romanian football. Now Astra needs a miracle. The harsh reality is that they have neither the fan base, nor the resources, nor the appetite from the local authorities who sought to relocate Astra to Georgiou to get them out of this mess. 
even when Astra won the top flight of Romanian football for the first and only time in the 2015-16 season in a city of more than 60,000 people, just an hour's drive from Bucharest, they could only average 3,000 fans at their home games. Most Romanian football fans have little love for Astra, who they viewed as being relocated and artificially inflated by the wealth of just one man who is now a convicted criminal. Albeit, Astra certainly aren't alone in Romanian football when it comes to being owned by a crook. Corruption and truly woeful mismanagement on a monumental scale is rife in Romanian football. Unlike in most European leagues, when a team gets relegated from Liga 1 in Romania, even former national champions, rather than challenging for promotion back to the top flight the following season, often they just go bust. That is what happened to Vitoral Constanta, Targu Mioresh, FC Timisoara, and numerous others. And I apologise, by the way, for all of the words that I've butchered in this video. I should just have said Astra Gugu all the way through. In 1986, Stau Bucharest beat Barcelona, with an all-Romanian starting 11 and bench, to be crowned as the champions of European football. During the 1990s, Romania qualified for all three FIFA World Cups that decade, where they beat the likes of the Soviet Union, England, and Argentina, reaching the knockout stage on all three occasions, and the quarterfinals in 1994, with former Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Galatasaray firebrand Gheorghi Hadji as their talisman. Now Romanian football is firmly in the doldrums. The country's biggest clubs are in crisis, the rest are up one minute and down the next, corruption is rife, and attendances are dwindling. Romania haven't qualified for the World Cup since the 1990s. They rank 25th in UEFA's league coefficients, sandwiched between Bulgaria and Azerbaijan, and Astra's tail is an all-too-common one. Even still, for a football club that was beating the likes of Lyon and West Ham United just a few years ago, was the best team in all of Romanian football in 2016, and still reached the final of the Romanian Cup in 2021, and I know that a lot has happened in recent times, but that was still only a year ago, to now be dead last in their group in the third tier of Romanian football, with just a handful of players who were all born in the year 2004, and to be losing games 13 and 19-0, well, that is quite something. If Astra Georgiou still exist when Ion Nikolai is released from prison, I would be extremely surprised. And their demise will leave not one, but two empty stadiums behind, one in Ploiesti and one in Georgiou. That is it for today's video. I hope that I was able to enlighten you if you had seen Astra's plate on social media, but had wondered how it came about. Hit the like button if you did enjoy today's video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for HITC7s. You can also find me on social media on either Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so. Cheers.